Multiplication, the second episode of the fifth season of Miraculous Ladybug. Coming into this episode, I had low expectations and didn't expect much. After all, I know what will happen and what the season has in store, thanks to the Miraculous Season 5 Bible. The, ep the episode opens surprisingly the same place where we were in episode 1, which is honestly strange. I get it, we've seen Monarch give his little speech three times already. Please don't tell me every episode will open this way. So, Ladybug begins by telling Cat Noir that she confused Felix with Adrian, which is why she lost all the Miraculouses. It's weird because Marinette says this so casually without suspecting Felix to be Monarch. You would expect them to use their brains and connect the dots and realize Felix was either Monarch or knows Monarch in some sort of way. After this, Suhan makes another appearance after a whole season of doing nothing. This scene is short and honestly unnecessary. Suhan just rambles about what a bad job Myrna is doing as a guardian, and he has a point. But he is almost immediately shut up after Ladybug and Cat Noir bring up the fact that he has done nothing to help them out. So he falls down and starts crying like a baby after being told off by some teenagers. Which is sad but hilarious. Also, oddly enough, Suhan mentions he will go back in time and get reinforcements. Which I have no idea what that means. Does he even have the ability to travel through time? Whatever, we'll see. Ladybug and Cat Noir power up and immediately Ladybug goes on some sort of wiki page on Felix. Which is kind of creepy, but I guess being a millionaire like Felix means little privacy. Here we get a family tree of the aggressed, and we can see black images where Felix's dad and grandparents should be. Then Ladybug starts talking about Felix's information out loud as if she were in some sort of podcast or covering some sort of topic to people. This moment really threw me off, and voice effects are a bit too much. It makes it a bit harder to understand what they're saying, but it's fine. They fly off to Amelie's home and check if she knows of Felix's whereabouts, and interestingly, she claims to not know. We learn later that she's actually beckoning up, which is odd, wouldn't she be a bit sus about the situation? Like does she not wonder how her son got the miraculous that can legit create life out of nowhere? Anyway, Myrnot calls Alia over to be all girly and talk about feelings, and this is where the love square turns the tables. Adrian starts to fall for Marinette, and Marinette begins to lose feelings. Great timing Adrian. He would have had a shot like three episodes ago. Later we see Alex's dad give a TED talk about why Alex won't be at school for the coming weeks or months or whatever. But wasn't the whole secret identity thing important? Why is he here going around telling the entire classes that Alex is actually Bunnix? Like is that not what they're trying to avoid? Why can't he just tell the class she's on vacation or something? It's redundant having to tell everyone she's out there traveling through time. What's worse is that Lila now knows the identity of the holder of the bunny, which is, and since she is supposed to be the Hawkmoth of the future, is terrible. Yikes, unless the writers dumb her down and just make the excuse that she forgot. Also now that Adrian has fallen for Marinette, for some reason he keeps attempting to kiss Marinette for some reason. I mean it could be a friendly kiss to the cheek, but that's just weird. A normal high works. This boy clearly still doesn't know how to act around people. You don't go around kissing your friends hello. Out of the blue, Ikari goes and comes in after weeks of no attack from Monarch. Of course, the heroes are surprised Monarch attacked out of nowhere. So the heroes and the villain have a back and forth brawl until Ikari goes and uses the power multiplication. Ladybug immediately realizes she must have the Mouse Miraculous. But I'm pretty sure Monarch can give anyone he accumulates any power he desires. So Miraculous isn't exactly necessary, is it? It's just weird that later he will transmit his power to a villain, when he can just give them the power already with no Miraculous included. This show is just a huge mess. So of course, Ladybug summers her lucky charm and uses a fishing line in the most BS manner. Somehow she uses it to get Ikari goes and swords stuck in a building, and then breaking it to defeat her. But wouldn't they need her to unmultiply to catch the Akuma? In Mega Leech, they needed to break and catch all the Akumas. 
I know he multiplied because of the Santi monster, but come on, it's basically the same thing. So of course, after being defeated, Kagami's mom did not have the miraculous. So now Ladybug has a brain explosion and feels bamboozled. They just shrug it off and carry their day as if nothing happened. I don't... Instead of that, I don't know, can they have like, investigated or something? Who knows, maybe she decided to keep the miraculous for herself or hide it or something. Oh well. The episode ends normally except for the part where this crazy ad pops up. When I first saw this I couldn't help but laugh. Gabriel looks like the main villain from the Boss Baby 2. And I just can't unsee it. So now Gabriel has these phone rings. And gee he has a thing for rings this season. So it turns out Gabriel made the ad using a 3D model of Adrian instead of having him model. Which, this is very strange. Seemingly, Gabriel is now listening to Adrian for once. I don't know whether to feel relieved or to fear for Adrian's life. The episode ends with Felix speaking with his mom and summoning Duzu. And for some reason, she asked for Natalie. Was this not against the rules? How was she able to speak Natalie's name without burping out bubbles? The inconsistency is insane. Also, Felix starts speaking like some sort of main villain with a scheme up his sleeve. Oddly enough, he tells Duzu he is much more than her master. I'm unsure what this means. Are they friends or does it mean she is his slave like Gabriel told his Kwamis? Well, I know what will happen, but we'll just wait and see what happens next episode. Whenever that is. Well, what did you think? Was this episode bland with little plot or was it good? Comment below and let me know. Until next time, stay miraculous.